In this video, uh, we're going to take a look at the idea of price action trading and selling short near resistance. Hello, I'm David Jones from Capital.com and in the latest of these short videos on simple trading strategies, I thought we'd uh, take a look at the idea of, of using price action to try and get us into a trade when we think a market is going to fall. I think if you're new to trading, you think that it's going to be really complicated. Uh, you have to have a trading plan that runs to 10 pages in length. And you don't have to. There are some simple techniques you can use. And in this one, we're going to look at the idea of selling short when a market moves near a previous high. Of course, during the day or during the week or during the month, whatever your time frame, markets will move around and set highs and lows. And these highs and lows can be important. They can be an area that shows you where sentiment has changed in the past. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at a short-term example, a five-minute chart for the German index, and looking at how a previous high can set up a number of trades after it, and just as importantly, uh, help us manage the risk and give us a level to place our stop loss. So let's take a look at the chart. So to explore this principle of previous highs, we've got the, the German 30 here, the DAX. This is a, it's quite a short-term chart. Every candle represents five minutes worth of trading. But we can see here, September the 13th, the market pushes up towards, what, 12,125. Sells off quite sharp. Sells off almost 100 points. So let, let's pick this up as an important high. Let's just uh, put that line in. So this is really our reference point now. So what we want to do, if we're trading using price action of previous highs and lows, we want to see how the market reacts if it gets back to this level. And we might want to think about selling. Let's just jump forwards. So this first high was set on the 13th of September, 12.15 in the afternoon. We've jumped forward um, to the next day. It's in the morning now. It's about uh, 8.45, September the 14th. The market has pushed up to this old high, has probed through, but has reversed. So this could be, for some people, a sign to go short, to sell in the expectation the market is going to sell off again. So we could go short where the market's currently trading now, 12,115, with a stop loss somewhere above these highs, let's say 12,130, 12,140, something like that. So we have a relatively tight stop. We've sold short, so we're positioning ourselves to profit from a slide. Let's see what happens next. So the market does sell off. It sells off quite sharply, first of all. Uh, it dropped uh, about 40 points in the next five minutes or so. And then it did actually push about 60 points lower in the end. So what we could have been doing here is just moving our stop loss below the price, trying to lock in some of those profits, but giving us the opportunity uh, to try and profit even further if the market falls. But the point here is how this previous high was a good reference point for entering the trade and um, setting our stop loss. We didn't necessarily know it was going to fall so sharply. There was no way of knowing that. But it was a good location to get a short on and place our stop loss somewhere above that high. And just a couple more instances uh, where this level proved to be important. You can see, again, later on the same day, we come up, sell off, come up again. It did break through. It only broke through by about five, six, seven points. So again, if we would had our stop loss 10, 15 points above, we'd have been okay came back up to it uh, again later on in the session, sells off much harder then. And then finally, just to show it doesn't work all the time, September the 18th, we're running up to this level and bang, it breaks through. So this shows the importance of having stop losses. But you can see how on at least four separate occasions, this high would have been really useful when it came to planning our future trades. So we're looking for significant turning points in the time frame that we're trying to trade. Rather than trying to trade here in the middle, we're looking to trade at an obvious extreme, but having our stop loss in place to get taken out for a manageable loss if suddenly that level gets smashed. So as we saw at the end, it doesn't work all the time. No strategy works all the time. But the benefit of trading this way is you have a definite level to get out if the market moves against you and a logical place to open up your trade. You saw there were three or four uh, situations there where the trade would have worked. And this is an example at the time of recording this video from just a, a few days ago. So it's not as if you have to go way back in the past to find these examples. But hopefully 
it does demonstrate if you're wondering where to start uh, if you're just starting trading to think about what the price is doing don't worry too much about indicators and moving averages at the beginning get used to following what the price is doing and looking at these previous highs and lows to give you an idea of where to get in and where to set your stop loss we'll start wrapping things up there uh, but as usual if you have any questions uh, or a different view leave us a message in the comments down below if you like the video uh, if you could just click on the thumbs up it helps us reach a wider audience and to never miss out on the content we produce if you just make sure you're subscribed by clicking the subscribe button and the alarm bell notification uh, means you get automatically notified whenever we upload a new video and during the week we'll look at technical analysis different markets like indices fx and cryptos a whole host of stuff but uh, for this week for this short introduction to uh, price action trading near resistance we'll wrap things up there so from me david jones and capital.com good luck with your trading Thank you.